While Thomas was waiting for Javqua to awake, he received a notification from his HUD, seemingly sent to all human citizens. The other human governors probably gave the citizens something similar, he thought. Tom felt a sense of dread, wondering what had happened. Since it was most likely important, he opened it, read it, and nearly fell over in surprise. To the loyal citizens of the Empire, as of 6.12pm New Britannia time, a new law was passed. After a recurring incident that has happened one too many times for the Galactic Federation government to tolerate. We thank you in advance for understanding and would like to clarify that while we do not approve of the GF censorship, we are obligated to obey it. The new law states that any information pertaining to human history that could be perceived as being mature must come with an accurate disclaimer for said information. The Galactic Empire of New Britannia. Thomas was shocked. There was no doubt that this was most likely his fault. Whether it was really him who had finally pushed the Galactic Federation government to his limit or not, he still felt responsible and guilty. His thoughts, however, were cut short when he heard a loud clattering from behind the corner he had just passed. Tom backpedaled, looking down the hallway. He spotted the same insectoid Zeno from the morning running away, and he was about to give chase when his hut got a notification for the second time that day. It was one of the school nurses. Javqua was awake and had asked for his presence. Taking one last look at the insect Zeno, he ran in the opposite direction towards the infirmary. He heard the bell ring, the morning class had ended, and students were beginning to pour out into the halls. He hadn't been noticed yet, his small size making most students look right over him as they began to talk excitedly. I had the human beat his entire class unconscious, Thomas heard one Zeno exclaim others chiming in with their own view or theories of what he had done. I heard it was because his teacher insulted O's history. The voices stopped as everyone noticed him, the entire hallway slowly quieting. Thomas was a little upset that the story had gotten twisted to such an extent, but that wasn't the most important thing to him right now. He resumed sprinting to the infirmary, the students letting out small shrieks or gasps as they quickly moved out of his way. It was a little cool. A crowd instantly parting to let him through, but also a bit sad. Was this going to be his new life? Permanent isolation? Ah, it's not isolation, you have Javqua, he thought, and he began running even faster. Thomas almost ran past the infirmary, stopping with a jolt. He nearly fell flat on his face, but he quickly backtracked and entered the room. Javqua was sitting in one of the many infirmary beds, one of the first from his class to awake. She noticed him, waving him over with a small smile. Thomas smiled back and walked over to her, fidgeting nervously. Good to see you awake. Sorry about... you know. Jovgua chuckled quietly, shaking her head. Uh, I'm okay, thanks. Thanks for asking. I was just really surprised to hear all that destruction caused by two wars. It's as if you humans are warring with yourselves on extreme levels near constantly, she sighed, and Thomas tensed. Um, he trailed off, as Javqua looked directly into his eyes. You're joking, right? Thomas shook his head, showing that he was serious. You... you mind explaining? Maybe with less details, Javqua said. Thomas was about to speak when he remembered the new law that had been passed. Uh, before I speak, I must give a proper disclaimer. The Galactic Federation government made it after what happened in our history class, actually. Javqua slowly nodded. Okay, that makes sense, I think. Some of the things I'm about to tell you are rated 90 to 100 out of 100 on the Galactic Horror Scale. So, uh, still want me to continue? Thomas asked, and he was surprised to see Javqua nod. He lowered his voice, making sure some of the nearby nurses or students didn't hear. So, we humans have been fighting each other since our earliest recorded and known history. Thomas watched as Javqua's face went from cautious interest to just blank, as she struggled to take in all the information he was telling her, nodding every once in a while. Full-scale wars, military skirmishes, information wars, cold wars, wars between kingdoms and empires, tribes, cavemen, yeah, the list goes on and on. Also, at the end of World War II, we actually used to... Thomas decided to stop there, smiling at Javqua's surprised expression. It was a little cute to be honest. 
He was about to ask if she was alright when he felt someone staring at him. Not a nurse or an awakened classmate, but... Thomas turned his head to look out a window as fast as he could. He spotted the insectoid from earlier, sitting in a tree, aiming a camera at him, and it was clearly surprised by his sudden reaction. Losing his grip, it began to fall, and Thomas heard a nasty sounding crunch, looking out the window just in time to see the figure attempting to limp away. Javqua, noticing the disturbance, looked out the window, eyes widening at the sight of the Xeno's fallen form, laying beside the tree. Was that a Vinsel? Javqua said to nobody in particular, as Thomas shrugged. I'm guessing it was, he said. How did you see it? Javqua asked. They're known for their incredible camouflage, she said. I didn't. I just felt like I was being watched. Its incredible camouflage was pretty bad too. It was much darker than the tree's leaves, Thomas explained. Your color vision is that good? Javqua explained, shocked. I, I guess, Thomas said. He had assumed that all Xenos had the same color vision as humans. Look, Javqua... Thomas lowered his voice even more as Javqua leaned forward. Listen, I think that... Vinsel has been following us since this morning. I don't know what... He stopped speaking as Javqua sprang up, stretching. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go find them! She boomed, and Thomas saw a predatory look in her eyes. Javqua dashed out of the infirmary, and Thomas flinched as her tail narrowly skimmed his chest before following her. The two ran down the hall as they made their way outside. She seems energetic, Thomas mused, as he struggled to keep up with Javqua. Thomas noticed Javqua starting to slow down after a while, her digitigrade claws screeching across the metallic floor. She seemed to try and regain her strength from the sprint, as Thomas began catching up. Thomas finally reached her, casually jogging up to her. Lost you for a bit there, I had trouble keeping up. Thomas noticed her state and realised what it meant. Oh, I see, he mumbled. You evolved to run in quick sprints to run through forests. Raising his voice, Thomas said to Javqua, We should get moving and maybe not so fast this time. The two continued at a slower pace, till they reached the school doors. Thomas reached for the door handle and pulled it, revealing the Vinsel. The insectoid staggered back as they approached, falling onto its rear. Thomas and Javqua approached the trembling sentient when Thomas heard the seemingly familiar footsteps behind him. What's going on here? A familiar voice said, and Thomas turned to see the headmaster. This Vincent was watching me and Javqua in the infirmary with a camera, Thomas blurted, as Javqua made confirming gestures. The headmaster shook his head. That's because Valus here is part of the school's photography team. Now, step aside. Here's work to do. Thomas looked at the headmaster. His face looked professional, calm, but underneath that, Thomas could swear the magistrate looked a bit... Smug? Well, he could have at least told us it's an invasion of privacy, Thomas protested, and the headmaster begrudgingly nodded. I suppose so, but I myself have to say, I guess he wasn't expecting two hell worlders to be so afraid of one Vince with a camera, the headmaster said rather pointedly, the smug look seeming to grow ever bigger. Thomas stared at the headmaster, who stared back, their eyes locked in the stalemate. Tom noted the posh shite hawk to look a bit worried. Suddenly, Javqua stepped in between them. Let's go to our dorm, Tom. We can receive our work online, she said quietly. And Thomas looked away. Yeah, you're right. Let's go, muttering to himself. He walked through the school doors past Valus, who backed away as he and Javqua walked past him. Thomas could still feel the headmaster's gaze burning into the back of his head until the door in between them finally closed. Once they were very safely out of earshot, Thomas began to speak again. What was that about? He demanded angry. What kind of fucking headmaster? Thomas stopped, taking a deep breath and holding it, before letting it out slowly. He turned to Javqua, who was looking at him sympathetically. Let's just do our homework, Thomas muttered, feeling himself calm down. Are you alright, Tom? Javqua asked a moment later, and Thomas shook his head. I guess. I just... The Vince or Valus could have been a stalker or, or a kidnapper and... Thomas sighed. At least we're fine, right? He said, smiling slightly, and Javqua beamed. That's right. I was hoping we could crack some bones, but knowing that me and my best friend are safe, we'll have to do. 
Thomas's smile grew even bigger as the two reached their dormitory building, making their way over to the elevator. Javqua collapsed on the nearest piece of furniture, mentally and physically exhausted from all the homework that she and Thomas had finished. She had already been tired from yesterday's movies, and now, later in the day, the effects of sleep deprivation were hitting her heart. Javqua? She turned to look at Thomas, who looked slightly concerned. Are you tired? Well, it has been a long day, innit? He said, and Javqua let out a confirming grunt. Here, come on. Thomas extended a hand and Javqua took it. Moments later, her jaw dropped as he actually managed to pull her up. You good? Thomas's voice pulled her out of her stupor and she blinked. Uh, thanks? She stammered, still shocked. Thomas's muscles weren't just very visible. He really had the strength of a Hellwilder. At that moment, Javqua wished she could have seen herself. Her seven foot tall body essentially being carried by someone a foot shorter than her. Thomas escorted her to her room, as she gently leaned on him. Javqua flopped onto her bed as Thomas left. I'll keep the volume down, Thomas called out, and Javqua couldn't even respond. She was too tired. So tired, in fact, that she forgot about her room heater.